this morning I'm going to be using this buck converter which is attached to this electronic load as a vehicle for trying to kill two birds with one stone. The uh, first is I would like to start talking about, or at least before I go much further along this power electronics route, I would like to talk about some general engineering principles and that also might give me a chance to uh, to achieve another objective which is to try to respond to a request I received from a student some time ago. She was looking for a set of uh, notes from an IEEE presentation that I had made to the student chapter uh, of the IEEE. Unfortunately, the that presentation was made some years ago and I no longer had the materials. So what I'm going to be doing here is in a sense sort of reconstructing some of what I uh, talked about in that presentation but also as a precursor to the application of engineering principles to design of devices like this buck converter. So with a lot of talking let's get on with some uh, some real meat. So what does all that have to do with Walden and the art of engineering? Well, the presentation that I was talking about uh, was made in response to the uh, a request that uh, was made from uh, uh, actually the dean of the engineering school to talk to the students at the IEEE meeting about my experience in school because I went from a student who was actually forced to withdraw from the university because of poor grades to a Dean's List uh, engineering student that continued through my undergraduate graduate and eventually PhD programs and I had discussed this with him over lunch one day uh, telling him how important that certain people had been in, in the transformation of me from a not very good student, in fact a failing student, to a uh, top of the list student and Part of the reason for that, the major reason for that, was because of some, some great mentors that I had. And so, in trying to introduce the idea of engineering, I'd like to talk about some of the things that I learned from some very smart people who were also very helpful and contributed a great deal to my later success. And it begins with my high school English teacher, Mrs. Simon. Uh, now I had a great math teacher, uh, Mr. Smitherman, and a great science teacher, Mr. Edge, but, but Sue Simon probably had as much influence on me later as anyone else. And one of the reasons is she taught me how to how to look at life and, and how to look at things. Now it was only many years later that that began to pay off, but I later realized that a lot of the things you learn from literature, for example, the idea of Thoreau that life is frittered away by detail and you should simplify is as much a part of what engineering is really about than anything else. Now, I realize that some people aren't interested in hearing any of this. They just want to know, give me the formula and, uh, you know, I just, want to, I just want to pass the test. So, all I have to say is, there are many re uh, versions of this. One of them appears in the King James Version of Matthew. Who hath ears to hear? Let him hear. Uh, of all I can say. The, uh, one of the things that I learned <laughs> seems very simple 
and that is in any course where you're trying to learn a, a fixed amount of material, and you have a textbook, read the table of contents. There is no better way to know where you're going. Now some teachers and professors will actually prepare and hand out a syllabus and other things that has the same effect and can actually be better. But if you read the table of contents of the textbook, you'll find that it helps you to put things in context. In engineering, modeling, that is the use of conceptual diagrams, is very, very important. For example, early on in your education, you learn, probably in junior high, that energy is conserved. In other words, it doesn't appear and disappear. It just goes somewhere else. And using principles like the conservation of energy and concepts like equivalent circuits, which allow you to simplify the engineering task, can be the difference between understanding a subject and, and applying it. And, and wondering about all the complexity and how could I ever get my hands around this. Approximation is an important part of engineering and pretty good almost always beats perfect. There is no perfect world and so while it can be useful to idealize so, for example, an ideal inductor or an ideal capacitor, there is no such thing as a perfect world. Also, linearization, that is, if you've got a slightly nonlinear circuit, but you assume it is linear for purposes of analysis and design, and then later you realize, well, I do need to insert some small adjustment for the nonlinearity. That's a whole lot easier than starting out assuming that everything is nonlinear and I have to compute this very, very complicated set of differential equations. And that leads to the idea of piecewise analysis. That is, if you can break the, if, if the analysis over the entire range is very complicated, Break it into pieces. Divide it into linear segments. Another important engineering principle is the idea of superposition. And the idea there is that if you have two linear, uh, if you have a linear circuit or you have assumed you were working with a linear circuit, either through piecewise or other linearization, then you can apply superposition. So you can do a number of computations and then add them all up to get the total. That's what superposition is really all about. The, the last thing that will get us to where we want to go with this buck converter is, remember that there's nothing wrong with doing transient analysis, but transients will end. And in a circuit that has a steady state, when you get to the point that is the point of steady state, you can start using things like average values, power balance and charge balance, current balance. We'll talk about these a, a little bit later. You can also use things like transforms. That is just another way of looking at the reality. So, for example, you can transform something from the uh, time domain into the frequency domain. Fourier transform or Laplace transforms. Solve it more easily in that new uh, reality and then transform it back to the time domain. Last, I'd like to touch on the idea of simulation. It can be very useful, but take it with a grain of salt. Remember, it's just a uh, it's just a way of looking at a model. So get in the lab, risk your design, but not your life, 
And now I would like to close this portion with a quote from one of the smartest people, certainly one of the smartest mentors that I ever had, a physics professor. On his wall he had this quote, if we value bad philosophers over good plumbers, neither our theories nor our pipes will hold water. And this professor was taught me the fact that, uh, by the way, I almost didn't take his course because he said, if you're here because it's uh, good for your schedule, you should, you should immediately get out because this is going to be a very, very hard course. It was called the Berkeley Physics section. And I almost dropped the course and wound up making an A++. And the reason is, he taught me more than probably anybody else the importance of focus. Do your homework, listen, take notes, go over your material, that sticking to, the, to your plumbing will get you a lot further in life than floating around in daydreams. So, that may be a long way from Walden and the art of engineering, but what does that have to do with buck converters? Well, the buck converter that we're uh, looking at is based on an LM2596, and this is a page that I printed out from Amazon uh, that purports to show the uh, characteristics of this particular buck converter. There are some errors in there listing the, uh, and I found another uh, listing for this same buck converter. And for example, the uh, maximum output voltage is really 30 volts DC or closer to 30 than it is to 35. But the most important thing is that the frequency is actually 65 kilohertz. Now I, I simply uh, say that because when you start trying to analyze this circuit using some of the principles that we've just talked about, that is the, the principle for example of uh, charge balance and current balance. Let's suppose, for example, that we want to compute what is a good value for this inductor. The, the way we can do that is by assuming the steady state and here are some calculations based on assuming a steady state and then, uh, and by the way, assuming a frequency of 66 kilohertz, uh, by the way, I only chose that because it makes the time 15 microseconds a, a nice uh, round number, and a duty cycle of about 0.5, 50-50, so that the duty cycle times the time is 12 microseconds. So why do we want all that? Because we're going to be, we're going to use this formula to compute capacitance, and this formula to compute inductance. Now, if you would like to see the derivation of those formulas, I suggest that you go to this site on YouTube. Professor Kim, her name is Catherine Kim, by the way, talks about how you can use charge balance and current balance to derive the equations that you see at the top for the capacitance and the inductance in a buck converter. Now I've done that here using the, the formulas at the top and I got capacitance and inductance values. All of this, by the way, is based on the idea that once you assume a steady state, you can then depend on certain things being true. For example, the average charge on a capacitor is going to be a constant. Because if it wasn't, 
the capacitor would charge to a higher value or go or drop charge to a lower value. Similarly, the average current through an inductor is going to be the average value in the steady state. If it weren't, more current would flow and until the average current rose to a higher level or less current would flow and it would fall to a lower level. So the steady state can be your friend in doing all of that and it's important to these calculations. And if you go over to Kat Kim's show, uh, you'll see her explain better than I can how you can use things like the power balance, charge balance, current balance to uh, in the steady state to simplify the engineering problem that you're dealing with and then at that point basically you're doing what Thoreau recommends in Walden. Don't fritter away your engineering life with detail. Simplify and you'll find that things become not only simpler but also more understandable. I hope this was helpful to people and I hope this also uh, that, that the young lady that asked for those uh, notes uh, will find this video. Unfortunately, I have lost her email address and so I can't even alert her to this. But I hope she finds this. And for the rest of you, I hope in this that you have ears and you hear and you find this useful. Please stay safe and have a nice day.